Okay, we're going to <clears throat> wrap up this little high roll center testing program that I did. Apologize for not getting back sooner, but sometimes life just gets in the way. So I thought I would just go quickly through uh, what I did. Uh, this is the setup I started with, which is what I call the low roll center. Uh, it's essentially the uh, EU carpet starting setup, which is a very nice setup. Works extremely well, very easy to drive, definitely a good place to start. So then we went to what I call the high roll center version. And this, all I did was is I added a three millimeter shim underneath the inner lower arm. Everything else stayed the same. Uh, shock springs, damping, uh, camera gain, everything. So what this did was it raised the roll center up significantly, uh, got the rear very close to uh, uh, ground level. Uh, it also increases the camber gain quite a bit. So it stiffened it and uh, raised the roll center. And essentially what I created was a car that was pretty much undrivable. So from there, uh, the next outing, uh, I created two setups to look at. One is what I call the mid-high with uh, camber gain correction. So the roll center is a little bit lower and the uh, uh, camber gain was set down to sort of match where we started with with the uh, low roll center setup. And uh, this was turned out to be a very good, uh, very good setup. Uh, was the quickest I had come up with so far. So then I did the same thing with the high roll center uh, and tried that and it was better. It was more drivable, but it was still very, very edgy. Uh, not very easy to drive. Uh, had a tendency to traction roll. So the next round, what I did was is I thought, let's see if we can make this high roll center version even better. So I softened it up and went to, well, I, I softened it up in stages and I went to heavier oil to try and uh, tame down the edginess and ended up with a very good setup. Uh, it worked uh, quite well, was relatively easy to drive, fast, carried lots of corner speed, um, and yeah, it was it was a uh, definitely a winner. Uh, what I wanted to do was I wanted to go back to this medium high guy and see if I could improve on him because this was uh, also a, a quite a good setup, but a little on the edgy side and could uh, could use uh, a little bit of work. Unfortunately, the track layout changed, so I was unable to uh, get back and uh, do that comparison as well. So where we sit now is I've actually have gone back to this setup and I have played around and gone to softer, <coughs> softer springs. Uh, I'm using lighter oil right at the moment and this uh, setup is working quite well at this point in time. Uh, track layout is quite different from the previous version. It's a lot, uh, lot more technical, a lot more uh, tight, twisty turns. Uh, so, just to wrap up where the final uh, test round, so this is the high roll center version um, with the seven uh, turn progressives on the front, the six and a half turn progressives on the rear, and six, 650 CST oil. So, here's the the magic numbers here, so you can see compared to the original low roll center version uh, on the top 30 I'm eight uh, eight hundredths faster uh, in the overall um, fastest lap I'm a tenth and a half faster so significant improvement particularly when you consider this is a small track uh, the things we can learn from this a little summary here. So 
Raising the roll center is going to make your SAS chassis much more responsive <coughs> since the, the roll moment, the moment that's trying to roll the chassis, is reduced. Uh, so that means the weight transfer will occur faster because it takes less time for the chassis to roll to its uh, final set position. So this can cause the, the car to become very, very edgy and lead to traction roll. So if this occurs, then you can, you can just soften the springs and any roll bars or increase the damping, decrease camber gain. Uh, you've got lots of tools uh, with this car that you can use to, uh, to get back into something that's drivable. Uh, the other thing is the closer the roll center is to the ground, the more it moves laterally. Uh, this was just this was uh, shown in the um, high roll center uh, test where the rear roll center was very close to the ground and if uh, using the dynamic or kinematic uh, tool on RC crew chief you could see that the uh, the roll center moves outside of the track width as the chassis rolls which probably is not a good thing and could lead to uh, uh, instabilities. So I can see high roll center can be uh, certainly beneficial on bumpy tracks because uh, it allows you to use softer settings, softer spring settings. Uh, so you still can get the similar response but you can have the uh, softer setup so it'll handle the bumps. Uh, so our general rule from all this is higher roll center, softer suspension settings. Uh, you can play around in this to find what uh, works for you, but uh, certainly don't be afraid to play around with the setup on this car because uh, uh, it has a lot of adjustability built into it. So that's it. That wraps up this uh, little project. Uh, I've got some other things in the works right now. I'm doing some uh, uh, testing of a whole whack of uh, uh, springs that I have seemed to have accumulated over the years. So that will be the next thing. I'm also going to do some uh, testing on chassis torsional stiffness, which should be interesting. So stay tuned. We'll uh, get something out here in the nut too distant future.